Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys, you guys, for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, it does not work without you guys. Seriously. So thank you guys for holding on and being here and covering the show. A uh, couple things real quick. Um, I think, uh, and I want to get your input, I'm thinking about resetting the clock for the draft since the NFL is still looking at keeping it at the uh, 23rd of the month. So I think we should count down to that, or do you think we should go ahead and count down to the beginning of the season? What's your thoughts on that, guys? So we have something to look forward to each morning. But let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods. Wake up, guys. Wake up. All right, so we hear that, uh, well, actually, Another thing I want to take care of, too, is I am actually ordered, I have actually ordered from Discount Mugs, um, shot glasses, more shot glasses. I only have about 25 left uh, for the channel members. When you become a channel member, I send you all out uh, a shot glass so that way we can, when the Cowboys make you drink, and by all means, I'm not saying drink alcohol. You can put whatever beverage it is. But when the Cowboys make you drink, we can all at least toast one together. Um, so you guys have seen my little logo that I got from Brian De La Rosa. Shout out to Brian. Um, keep your ass at home. So we've actually got the Joe Boo star on the front, and we've actually got the um, uh, keep your ass at home on the back of it. So I will actually have those, I think, next Friday or Saturday. So I'm going to go ahead and put those on the website, and they're going to be at a deep discount price for them because I want everybody to keep your ass at home. And it gives them something else to do, too. So we'll definitely be having those on the website and things. And um, new members, you, you will get those as well. Uh, tailgate members, whenever we come up with a new design, you automatically get one of those. So uh, i got to get the 12 of you guys um, ones out to you as well. So here we are. We hear that the Dallas Cowboys have finally started talking to Dak Prescott's people again. Uh, about trying to get a contract and stuff worked out, which would um, behoove the team monetarily-wise, at least for this year, because the cap number is a hard number for this year. They get a long-term deal done, they'll actually save some cap space, um, which they can use for somebody else, or at the present moment, I'm not sure that they're going to use up all of the cash. To put this in perspective, right now we have, I believe... 21 million dollars in cap space and that's before we get to a long-term deal that'll increase with um that getting a long-term deal to put that in perspective um like 2013 2014 we started the nfl league year having to gut the team because we were typically 25 well 21 to 25 million over the cap before free agency started we would have to restructure Tony Romo or Tyron Smith's deal or, you know, uh, Tyron Crawford did. They restructured his deal. Or Jason Witten's. Basically borrowing money just to get to zero before we even started the league year. You got that? Demarcus Lawrence, the year that we ended up franchise tagging him, for example, we started out the offseason with just $21 million. So to think that the Dallas Cowboys have franchise tag Dak Prescott, have signed Amari Cooper to a big deal, have brought in Gerald McCoy, have brought in uh, Demontre Poe, have locked up D-Law, have, like I said, Amari Cooper in there, have um, brought in Clinton Ha Ha Dix, is actually freaking amazing. We lost some players, yeah, Byron Jones and, uh, of course, uh, Robert Quinn. But you can't hold on to everybody. But those two guys should be bringing us compensatory picks. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. And Randall Cup too. It's a thing that you're going to look at and say, okay, for the betterment and the future of the team, we've done really, really well. So one of the things I want to talk about, and this is near and dear to my heart, is... The fact that we got Don Terry Poe, I am, 
I wanted to be the real big fat guy, but unfortunately I was only about 225 pounds playing nose, um, which is bigger back in the 80s when I played versus today. That would be about 275 now because guys have gotten a lot bigger. When I played college football, there was like one 300-pound guy. That was Dave Butts. And when he was playing at 300 pounds, they were like, oh, my God, you know, he's huge. 300-pounders are nothing now. We have literally gotten that much bigger. Um, I think what you're seeing is the evolution of the Dallas Cowboys defense, where we're going to go from a 4-3 to a 3-4. Now, back in my day, the guy in the middle was known as a nose guard. They've changed the terminology. We used to call it a 50 defense because basically it was a five-man front versus a 40 defense, which was a four-man front. To give you an example, this is our defense, or at least it was going into this year. Basically, you have four, basically four down linemen, okay? They're called defensive ends and tackles. You have the nose tackle and the under tackle. So this is what we have. And we would have, basically, you have your right end, your left end, your, your usually bigger guy, your nose tackle, and your under tackle. Okay, so he lines up on the center, or sometimes they'll both line up over the guards. They'll kind of shift that line a little bit. And you'll have the weak side linebacker, the middle linebacker, and the strong side linebacker to go ahead and make the plays. The problem for us is right here over the center. With our defense, we did not get enough push, and we were susceptible to the run. If you looked at the statistics, every time a team ran, up the center's butt, they got 4.6 yards a carry. And what happens to your under tackle is he's going to get double teamed by the guard in the center or the, the other guard in the center. Or if they have a fullback, a fullback will come through there. Sometimes the tight end will come in motion and it'll do a wham block. So this guy gets pushed around. And when you end up having the tackles over the guards, it basically leaves this corridor right there. So if you end up having that double team here and an influence block over there, that leaves that middle wide open and it's basically the middle linebacker that's the only line of defense. Make no mistake about it, our run stopping ability hurt us last year. So we have tried to address that. Now, with this defense, the other problem with this is, is this. This will, of course, change. Like I said, more times than not, you'll have the nose tackle over the guard. The defensive end will be outside and a little bit wider on pass plays. You end up getting Demarcus Lawrence and Robert Quinn rushing real hard on the outside. Great. They're putting plenty of pressure on it. But if you do not get a push from these two guys, that quarterback can step up and he can go past those guys and end up making big plays. Or if they can step up, they can see the other guys. And it's just not a great defense when it comes to stopping the run, at least in my mind. Again, I, I came from a 50 defense when I played in school. I just like it a lot better. So the difference being is, and, and I don't know for sure that this will be what we switch to, but Mike Nolan is a 3-4 guy. Now the difference is, the three being three defensive linemen, and you have four linebackers. Although, not every linebacker is necessarily the same, okay? So what you have is, again, they call him a nose tackle. Back in my days, we were known as an NG. We were the only one, nose guard. Don't ask me, we lined up over the center, not the guard, but it was a nose guard. His job is to line up over the middle and clog the middle, okay? Your defensive ends are really like tackles or defensive linemen, okay? The weak side and the strong side linebackers are really kind of more like defensive ends. Demarcus Lawrence, I'm sorry, Demarcus Ware was a linebacker, but very rarely did you see him actually covering somebody. When you think of a linebacker, a linebacker is, you know, he's not big enough really to be a lineman, and he's not small enough and quick enough to be a cornerback. He's a hybrid in between the two of them. But in the 3-4 defense, they're more of outside rushers. Yeah, occasionally they'll drop them off to cover the flat um, and things. But more times than not, what they are is basically like an edge rusher. Charles Haley, for example, was an outside linebacker. But every time, where do you see Charles Haley? 
He's on the line, getting up field, going after that quarterback's ass. What I like about it is you get this big, fat, movable force guy in the middle that knows he is literally key. His job, his sole job is to push the line of scrimmage back and to occupy these guys so they don't get on the linebackers. Now, the difference for me is, is this. Basically, on pass plays, you've got a five-man front right there because your linebackers are going to go out and they're going to attack the pocket. Then these three guys are going to try and collapse it, push back into it. So it becomes kind of like Star Wars and the trash compactor, that this thing just starts closing up on the quarterback, and hopefully the quarterback starts getting happy feet. Or you have so many guys that are coming from so many directions that you don't see where they're all coming. And so you're trying to make a play that this outside rusher can get that hand on the ball and cause a turnover. And turnovers are king, especially if you can get it in the backfield. But let me give you guys a little taste uh, before we get out of here of Don Terry Poe and what I'm talking about. Now this, he's actually lined up over top of the guard here. This is Don Terry Poe right here. But you'll see, you, you notice how big that body is. Let, let's, let's bring the camera up a little bit. Let's bring the camera up a little bit here. You'll see that, look at that, look at that body. Look, isn't that a, that's a beautiful body right there. He is a big, fat guy who can move. Ding. Oh, look at Double team. Four-man rush, he's Winston steps up, he's, he's in trouble. And this way Down he goes. Himself, finds his way to the ball. Bam. And that's what we didn't get a lot of last year was that big push up the middle. Look, he holds up, bam, he's right there on the screen pass. 95, look at that. Big old butt. Here we go, boom. Push, double team, double team. Holds up the middle, no place for the quarterback to go. You see that? A lot of times with our defense, you'll see, you know, guys being able to keep a clear field of view. Watch. See what I mean? You see outside linebacker, outside linebacker, and you see you have this pocket collapsing that now the quarterback is, oh, shit, I've got to get out of here, but there's no place to go. Think about Mitch Trubisky with the Bears. Do you think Mitch Trubisky would have run for that touchdown if we had a pocket collapsing like that? Hell no, we couldn't have. But look at that. That is a beautiful thing in there. Boom. No place to run. No place to hide. Boom. Pushing. Look at it. Went right through the do Oh, my God. Oh, my. Oh, oh wait. I, I, I'm, I'm looking at this for the first time myself. I, I, this is what I love. He split the double team. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Here he is right here, okay? Well, look, he's, he's shaded um, in the gap of the guard and the center, okay? Pass play. He's going to get double team, and what you're taught to do is split the double team. Okay, look. You got the guard. He's looking outside here at that guy. Look at him. He's got poor leverage on the center right there. I mean, excuse me, the center has poor leverage. He's got him turned, and he's bull rushing right in between. The guard's going to come in there. Too late. Look at that. Boom. And swims over the guard. Takes his arm over top, giving him a small target. Squeezes between there. Look at that. Ain't nothing the center can do, but try, it's a, try and grab him. That's holding. That's holding. And gets that quarterback. That's what I'm talking That is exactly what I'm talking about. That's the kind of stuff that you want to see. Look at it. Look. Oh. Right oh. Look at it. Got held and still. Look at that. Damn. That's a beast. Let's see what we got here. Look at that. Oh. That's what I'm. Oh, man. Wait. Did you see that? That's what I'm talking about. Getting penetration and laying the wood. Oh, my God. Look at that. Damn. Look at that. Oh. So you can see why I'm excited about Don Terry Poe. He's going to give us that push up the middle. And it also will afford you the opportunity of starting to change over 
to the 3-4 uh, defense because he is a big guy. He is not like um, Malik Collins, you know, nice player and everything, but he is uh, 6'2", about 300 pounds. You got 354 pounds. That's what it's listed at. It might be a little bit more. And I, I can send you some extra snacks if you need to, Dr. Terry. Let's send you some Joe Boo wings. But you got that guy and all that beef, you know, that's coming for you. That's what you want to see right there. That was an amazing, amazing thing. And I, I got to tell you, I, I absolutely positively love that move. The defensive line. I know they don't get the big numbers of tackles and sacks and things like the defensive ends or, you know, 100 plus tackles like the linebackers or the interceptions like the cornerbacks and the safeties. But that guy is key. And I mean, he is key to your defense. And I, for one, am happy as can be that the Cowboys are recognizing that the defensive line is really, really important. So, that being said, I've taken up enough time here on YouTube, and uh, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and watch this, and I'm going to go through and figure out my day here. Um, fortunately, it's actually sunny outside today. It's been raining the last couple of days. It's going to rain tonight. It's probably too muddy for me to work on the front yard, but I'm going to try to. Because I'm trying to get all the weeds out. You know, they're like eagles. You think you got them all, them trolls, and here comes another one. You pull one weed, here comes another one taking this place. But I am literally at war in my front yard trying to get rid of these weeds. So I'm trying to take advantage of the time while we're here hunkering down uh, of trying to fix my front lawn. Because my front lawn is bad. It's, it's really, it's, it, yeah, it, it, it's a disgrace. It's kind of like the Washington Redskins. It, it's that bad. It, it really is that bad. But anyway, I'm going to catch you guys later on. We'll see if the Dallas Cowboys make any other moves today, but who knows. Uh, we keep getting surprises. Um, don't know if they're still interested in having some snacks and getting snacks Harrison or if they're looking at anybody else. But I have a feeling that the Cowboys are going to make one more big move before it's all said and done. So that being said, I'm going to see you guys later.